Hello, how have we been? How is life? How is that going? How is whatever we are doing? I thank God we are still alive. My name is Ines Colorin and today I'm not alone in the studios. I have a guest. Let her introduce herself. Hello everyone. Hello viewers. I am Sophia Nabale. I'm a student and I am a girl guide as well. I'm very happy and honored to be here and to very happy to be here to share with you what I have to do. Thank you. Yeah, I shall say she's from Uganda Girl, Girl, Girl Guide Association. She's going to tell us more about it as we come back. Let's take a short break and we come back on the same topic. Welcome back from that very short commercial break and we are going to be judging with Sophia as she said. What is Girl Guild Guide Girl Association? Guide. Yes. What is it all about? What do you do? Where is your base? As I told you earlier in my introduction, I am a girl guide. I fall under the branch of young leaders. Girl Guides is a girls movement that trains girls and ladies in different aspects, matters arising in their community, more so those that affect them. Girls also get a chance within the movement to learn leadership skills, practical skills for survival in life, get to make friends, get to have fun activities like at camp, go for trips and various other things. So you normally take girls for camping and train them to become leaders? Oh yeah, and the best part of the training is that after they receive the training, they have to, they actually must pass on the training to the community. Wow. Yes. Why do you, best, like if I want to be part of the camp, how do I join? Well, it's very simple. If you, if you love being a girl guide, if you love helping, if you like volunteering, you can simply say, I want to be a girl guide. Because at the moment, the biggest percentage is school based, because we carry out trainings in school to recruit new girl guides. But you can simply sign up. And if, if you're out of school or like in a community, like at campus, you can talk to your leaders and they write your name. And then the next time there is camp, you're invited to come around. Then you're given the initial trainings for a girl guide survival skills the history of guiding and very many things related to that and slowly, <coughs> slowly you pick up from, from all the strings. Okay, you've heard about domestic violence, right? Yes, yes, I It's have. too much in Uganda. It is mostly, I think, in like girl, okay, ladies, girls have faced too much of the violence. We hear a husband slaps the wife when the kids are around. We hear parents beating up their children, okay, the girls in particular, mm -hmm. like anyhow. What do you say about it? Well, I have a lot to say about it. Okay, briefly. Uh -huh. Yeah, like, so how does the girl guide help to reduce the violence that ladies face? Well, generally, in the start, what I didn't tell you about girl guides is uh, there is a variety of projects that girl guides do, like community-based projects. Mm -hmm. Like Before I get to your point, there is a Stop the Violence campaign that has been ongoing. There is alcohol prevention that has been ongoing in the East and Northern Uganda. There is Action on Body Confidence, most of the girls. And then most recently, there has been the 16 Days of Activism campaign against gender-based violence, which is one of the domestic violence cases. As girl guides, we've been carrying out door-to-door -door sensitization wow. to let people know of the dangers of domestic violence and even so because it has been a specific campaign for gender-based violence. Yeah, letting people know that girls are not to blame for what happens to them. You cannot beat a girl because she's a girl yeah. or because he's a boy because it's gender-based violence. But since we are girl guides, we advocate, we advocate most for the girls and uh, it happens most to the girls. Yeah, as you've been going door to door talking about domestic violence in the society, 
Have these people managed to tell you what really pushes them to do that? Well, usually most people try and open up, but it's quite hard to get answers from the adults because they hardly open up because they know they are to blame, but they prefer to ignore it. So usually we meet up with the children because most of them join the girl guiding. And the children, what do they say like, makes their, their parents to be them like anyhow? Well, some of them are cultural beliefs, some are uh, stereotypes, and then also how adults get to believe that, okay, we are adults, children must do that. But then it gets out of hand that they overdo it and exceed the limit, exceed what it's supposed to be. Things of a kind. Alright. Can we stop it? Do you think it is there is any way we can stop the violence and it exists no more? Yes, it is very possible. First of all, domestic violence is not the way to go. Beating someone because they have done something wrong will not help because it's only going to do more harm to the person and the person might just worsen because you've beaten them or you've burnt them or you've done any kind of harm to them. Yeah, me personally, I believe beating up someone doesn't put in them knowledge because you beat up that person in order to stop them from doing what they did. But yes. talking to them is rather better than beating them. So when we know that, it will be easier to stop because it starts with you. Yeah, if you know, if I know and you know, yeah. and then anyone else knows, then I wouldn't do that to my future family or to someone else. Yeah, then on addition or? Okay, can I On addition, you? after self-awareness, then let everyone else know. Let, let them know what you've learned about domestic violence. Do not let them continue with it. Like from the camp, I come to my society and tell them yes. what we should do so that the entire society knows how about these girls who have not gotten a chance. Because we have these girls in our villages. Is it too deep to the village? Yes, it is deep because it's spread out all over the country. There are different guiding units in different different regions of the country and each of the guiding units has leaders. Usually for camp, we all meet together, those that can make it for camp. So those that have come, go back to their different local communities and teach them what they have learned from camp. So that way the different girls spread out first of all to their families, to their playmates, so they, they can know what they have learned from camp, what they missed, and who knows, next time they might be inspired to as well go and get the direct, direct information. You say that during the camps you also do like, you train them how to defend themselves? Yeah, generally practical skills, like how? life skills, survival skills, let's say like at camp, each, each uh, girl guides are grouped in guiding units. So each unit should carry a tent because it's a camp, you're camping outside, not in a house. They, they, you give them tent and co they construct for themselves? No, you carry a tent. You could choose to construct it personally or you could carry a tent. And um, a camping tent and you have to get up for your accommodation like food. Um, well, there's always a water source, there's electricity. But yeah, it's uh, it's like going outside of your home at home to go in a new place to find a home to actually make a home. So they do food gathering while there. Oh, um, yes, you do food gathering, or you can actually come with your food depending on the place where we do have the camp. Okay. Yes. What would you do while in the camp? While well, in the camp, there's different trainings. Like I told you, there's a variety of projects that Uganda girl guides do. Yeah. Like uh, action of body confidence. Many girls are not confident about how they look. Maybe because they are too fat. Maybe because friends tell them, you look like this, you look like that. So we... Some girls are shy. Aha, uh -huh, that's true. I used to be. But there are some who cannot put it out of themselves. Me, I think I hope myself to be shy free. How do you bring up that person to be confident? You know how you are girls alone? There is a way you feel comfortable, there is a way a sisterhood connection is brought up. So if you share it with me and we're in the same guiding unit, the next time the guiding unit is going to have a meeting, we could say, okay, let's have you say the prayer. 
for the first time it could be a very traumatizing moment, a very, I mean, scary moment. But then with time, as you gain practice, mm -hmm. you, you outgrow the feeling. We are going to take a short commercial break and we're going to be right back. Welcome back from that short commercial break. As I told you, I'm with Sophie talking about the Girl Guide Association. What do they do? How are they helping the girls? How to empower the girls? How are we going to do it to empower the girls? Or how does the Girl Guide planning to empower the girls? Well, the Girl Guide is already empowering the girls. First of all, because they give them training and let them know that it is possible. They can do what they think they can't. They have no limit. They can and do what even boys do. Exactly. It and they could even be doing it better. It is one this. thing I always want. Like, I don't want to be in a society where they say, that one, that thing is for boys. I want when they find me doing something that they just take it no. Mm -hmm. How how can we make people understand that even us, like girls, there is nothing that is for boys and there are some things I cannot do. First of all, people need to change their mindset because it's all it all starts with what you think about others or maybe about yourself. It could be a selfish thought. But then again we need to understand that Things are things in life, or ideas in life, or different aspects of life are not uh, restricted to a particular group of people, because it is not written anywhere that someone must do this as a must only, because there is a variety of things, and anyone is free to do that. So people need to change their mindset and then get to understand that a girl doing what a boy is doing is not is not bad is not uh, degrading herself, is not shaming anyone else. She's comfortable doing that, she loves to do that, then why doesn't she do it? Yeah, there is this part where if they find me, I'm a girl, maybe we're in a village and I'm like, let's go fetch water and I carry two big jerkers. I'll be like, oh, she's like a boy. <laughs> so, can't people like see everything in the same way? Like if I carry two jerkans and a guy carries the two jerkans, it is the same. Mm -hmm. Recently we had the two for one contest. Mm -hmm. Yes, so we I heard about it. You heard about yes. it. Yes. They were saying, say no to sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. We've had more cases of sexual harassment. Too many, more so during this lockdown. What could be causing that? Because I think if it reduces, it will still be empowering the girls for the ladies in general. First of all, the saying goes, an idle mind is a devil's workshop. So we need to avoid being idle and get ourselves active, doing things that are contributing positively to our lives. Yeah. And then the earlier issue you started with of a girl carrying two jerry cans and a boy carrying two jerry cans, how should I mean that should not be a problem to the community or to anyone because they never near mass like if you overdo boy oh. stuff they chapla <laughs> such there is that word they never like be like she behaves like a boy. Well, it's always good to look at the uh, positive side of life because if I can carry two jerry cans and a boy can carry that means I'm really energetic. So you ignore all the negative comments because when people comment negatively, then most probably they are very pleased with the positive side of it and they just want to, you know, demoralize you or something of a kind. That's what I think. Oh, there is more? Yeah, you can add whatever. Well, the community needs to understand that if a girl can do what a boy can, or if a boy can do what a girl can, they should understand that it is normal. That and it, maybe it is a positive change? Oh yeah. A, and it's not, as long as it's not a negative activity or something that is not allowed in the community. 
do you know we have families where a girl is not supposed to participate where decision making is necessary? Well now that's when we get to stereotypes and cultural beliefs mm -hmm. which cause things like domestic violence, gender based violence because well back in the days or traditionally they said so and so or specifically this kind of person is supposed to do that. Yeah. But as we grow these days, we realize that even a little baby or a little girl could give you an idea of something you least thought of, and then when you think about her idea, it is actually good. You can actually build on it, and then it turns out to be something very, very good, something you wouldn't even have thought of. So we should all emphasize the equality, because we all have the same ideas at times. At times, girls have even better ideas than boys. We suggest we should always listen to um, what what else does girl guide? Do they do like teach these girls hands on? Yes, practically hands on every time, everywhere. Because when I talk to practical skills, okay, I did not really mm -hmm. expand it or explain much about it. Yeah. But girls get to make crafts, make friends, do activities that help them know each other. Most so educational ones like, and one is you're not going to go to class and then they tell you, girl guides is this, this and that and that. No, in guiding we say if it's not fun, it's not guiding. So whichever activity, whichever learning we are to make, it is put in forms of an activity or a game. And by the end of the game, you make an analysis, you evaluate what the game has been about. And then you realize the kids, the children, pick up actually faster that way. They get to know that, oh, we did this because of the Uganda Girl Guides. They, they have their official website. Facebook. Yes, Facebook, Uganda Girl Guides Association. Twitter, Uganda Girl Guides Association, uh, YouTube, uh, Instagram, yes, no, not sure about Instagram, but yeah, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, yes, Uganda Girl Guides Association. So in case I need any help from you, I just go on the pages and contact yes. you. Can I guess there are like contacts? If you yeah, it is too personal. Yes, there is contacts there. Okay, you can personally inbox the person and then find help for you. Right. Thank you. It has been cool hosting you on the show. Maybe you can give a small word to someone listening. Yeah. Thank you very much, Lorreen. Thank you so much, our viewers, for tuning in today. I am so happy that you invited me. Amazing to be here. I'm really so happy and I'm glad I've shared this information with you. One final word is uh, always think positively about anything. Everything in life happens for a reason. Just look out for the positivity in it. Yes. It has been in a scholaring on the show. And you can follow me on all my social media pages in a scholaring Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. And then don't forget to comment. That is on YouTube. Instagram still and Facebook. Thank you. Thank you.